glad to hear it. More than anyone else in this room. And he did. <laughs> so I had to put all the money in the bucket. Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise it would have been uh, yeah. suspect. It's a 50 50 raffle. Yeah. So they keep 50, and then the, the 50 gets given away, and so I right. gave all of it. He did yeah. question whether it was even legal for us to do that. Hey, Renata. <laughs> you're going to do that. Yeah, maybe first, don't have the first, Attorney General do that. First, next it time. was questioned whether. Yeah. It was legal for Charlie to win, then it was I'm all whether it's even legal to do a raffle. It was we just I put it in the bucket, <laughs> everything is fine. Yeah, because is it is it gambling? Do you need like a special permit? I just put it it was fine. <laughs> I solved it. That's great. Which given that Josh was there is probably yeah. the best way to handle it. Definitely the best way to handle it. Yeah, I've seen a great many 50-50 raffles where the winner just gives yep. all the money to whatever organization. Oh, look at this. They went and got frozen yogurt. Oh, they didn't want to oh. back to dance class. <laughs> No, no one has pulled out any speakers. Yeah, girls, girls, girls. Bell's got any gifts. Oh, that's what I'll go And Laura goes we into the bathroom and comes across that. the floor. And I hate you when they go to the boys' dance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not the boss of her. I'm not the boss of her. Yeah. Never have been. The upgrade of like printers. And yes. And okay, good. Stuff. And so, no. they, so no. they don't have a protest. The company. Yeah. Hello, no, no, no. Hello. Sharp is the one that gets My daughter's here tonight. Just was. FYI. Yeah. Tasty back there. Yeah. My daughter's here tonight. FYI. Oh, yeah. She's not in the front row because we have police. We got Cub Scouts. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I want to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order. Meeting of October the 1st, 2018. And I certainly want to welcome everyone here tonight. We're very glad to have you. And uh, first, I want to ask if you would please join me for a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Council Member Reese uh, if he would lead us in the Pledge of the Flag or perhaps introduce those who would like to. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to defer to Cub Scout. PAC 424, who's joining us tonight. If you guys want to come on up here, like we talked about, they're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, if it's your practice to do so. And if you're able, please uh, rise and join us. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. They're gonna Good job. Little, Thank they're going to get a little much. picture taken up here. Oh, you guys, what about the picture? I'll get the picture. <laughs> I told them that was okay. That's fine. That Absolutely. <laughs> all the moms and dads. Awesome. Thank you, fellas. Thank you all Appreciate so it. much. You are most welcome to stay. We're actually having a pretty brief meeting tonight, but you're also welcome to depart. You will not hurt our feelings. <laughs> and I see Robin Heeks. You must be a parent tonight, Robin. Great. Well, one of our great city employees. We're glad to have you here in a different capacity. Um, all right. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Shule. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Councilmember Austin? Here. Councilmember Caballero? Here. Councilmember Freeman? Present. Councilmember Middleton? Here. Councilmember Reese? Here. All right, thank you. We have four ceremonial items, and I'm going to ask uh, my colleagues I've got, uh, who are going to be helping me to, uh, to come do that, and we'll start with um, Hispanic Heritage Month Proclamation, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Councilmember Caballero if she will join me at the microphone. Good evening, and I'd like to ask Lenny to please join. Thank you. 
Whereas National Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated annually from September 15th through October 15th to celebrate the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens with ancestry from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America, and whereas the 2018 National Hispanic Heritage Month theme is Hispanics, one endless voice to enhance our tradition, which is a vital call to our nation that Hispanic persons have played a vital role in society, including its legacy of traditions, and whereas the city of Durham embraces persons of Hispanic heritage and recognizes that this population has had and continues to have a profound and positive influence in the city of Durham, and whereas the city of Durham has hired a diverse population of persons, including 4.2 of its workforce who identify as Hispanic or Latino, and whereas the Durham City Council for the first time in its history includes a person of Hispanic heritage, and whereas the mayor's Hispanic Latino committee was established in 2002 to promote cultural understanding and inclusion and became an official committee of the city of Durham by the unanimous vote of the city council on October 5th, 2015, and whereas the city of Durham is committed to seeking to improve existing opportunities and to open new doors for Hispanic and Latino residents in the city of Durham, thereby fostering inclusive communities with equitable resources and opportunities. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim September 15th, 2018 through October 15th, 2018 as Hispanic Heritage Month in Durham and hereby urge all residents and citizens to honor the distinct traditions of the Hispanic community and their contributions to our city, state, and nation by participating in relevant ceremonies, activities, and programs. Witness my hand and the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this first day of October 2018. Good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, City Council, and all persons present here tonight. First, uh, we, the Mayor, Hispano Latino Committee, uh, want to thank you for um, having us here tonight. Uh, the Human Relations uh, Division of the Neighborhood Improvement Services Department is pleased and honored to serve as a staff liaison for the Mayor, Hispanic Latino Committee, and to present this proclamation, which articulates the city's commitment to fostering communities that are not only inclusive, but are rich and equitable opportunities for all residents. During this month of acknowledgement and celebration, the NIS department co-hosted a listening session with Legal Aid of North Carolina on September the 20th to allow Latinos and persons from other countries of origin to inform us of any impediments to housing that they encountered because of their national origin. Also, the major Hispanic Latino community is co-sponsoring a screening of the film Wilmington on Fire with the Durham Human Relations Commission on October the 11th. Unfortunately, this event is sold out. <laughs> Hispanic heritage, awareness, and opportunities to honor and celebrate our diversity, it's a daily occurrence. We encourage you to continue, please, to celebrate the diversity beyond today. For more information about our Mayor Hispanic Latino Committee, please contact us to the uh, Neighborhood Improvement Services Department at the Human Relations Division. Please keep enjoying our Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Councilmember Caballero and uh, the folks who were here to receive that important proclamation. Uh, and now we're going to have our uh, Energy Efficiency Day proclamation, and I'm going to ask uh, Councilmember Reese if he would join me, and I see he already has, <laughs> and I believe Tobin Freed. Is Tobin here? Great, Tobin. Here you go, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We just get one more hand for the uh, great folks of Cub Scout PAC 424. They did a great job on the pledge. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Council Member uh, Caballero and I had some had the chance to spend some time with them uh, before the meeting, and I have to say they had some great questions. Uh, 
they had a suggestion about maybe buying some land in Canada and creating new states. We told them that was a little bit above our pay grade, but um, if you're still interested after the, after the meeting, I'll get you the president's address and you can write to him about that. Um, I'm gonna read the uh, proclamation um, about Energy Efficiency Day, and then I think Tobin Freed is the sustainability, excuse me, sustainability manager for the Durham City County Sustainability Office is gonna say a few words. Is that right, Tobin? Awesome. So why don't I go ahead and start talking. <clears throat> Whereas the city of Durham and Durham County adopted a joint greenhouse gas emissions reduction plan in 2007, establishing a goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from government by 50% and the community by 30% by 2030, and whereas energy efficiency is the art of getting the same or better performance using less energy, all while reducing greenhouse gas emissions and utility bills for residential, business, and industrial customers, and whereas reliable, affordable energy is vital to our economic prosperity and energy efficiency is the most productive, cost-effective, and clean way to meet our energy needs, and whereas implementing clean energy policies and programs helps boost economic opportunities and job creation while continuing to move toward a sustainable future. And whereas cutting energy waste saves U.S. consumers billions of dollars on their utility bills annually, up to $500 per household from appliance efficiency standards alone. And whereas more than 2.2 million Americans work in the energy efficient sector, efficiency sector in local, good-paying, clean energy jobs that can't be outsourced and increasing efficiency will create more of them. And whereas smarter energy use reduces the amount of electricity we need to power our lives, which helps avoid power plant emissions that can harm our health, pollute our air, and warm our climate. And whereas workplaces in Durham can continue to contribute to our energy efficiency efforts <coughs> by learning about and participating in the Bull City Workplace Challenge. And whereas a nationwide network of energy efficiency groups and partners has designated October 5th as the National Annual Energy Efficiency Day. And whereas together the residents of Durham can continue to contribute to our sustainability efforts by learning more about energy efficiency and practicing smarter energy use in their daily lives. Now therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 5th, 2018 as Energy Efficiency Day in Durham and hereby call upon the residents, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools in Durham to join in supporting our clean energy goals and moving toward more energy efficiency now and in the future. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina. This is the first day of October, 2018. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here for this proclamation. October is National Energy Awareness Month, and it's a great way to kick it off with energy efficiency awareness. As was mentioned in the proclamation, energy efficiency is a great way to protect our environment while also saving money. So it's a win-win all around. And the city takes this very seriously. Committed uh, over $1.7 million towards capital improvement projects to increase energy efficiency in our own buildings and has reduced our energy use by 18% since 2010, while we're actually increasing the amount of buildings that we have. So that's wonderful, and we're going to keep working at that. Some of the projects we've done are include lighting upgrades, including LED lights right here in City Hall. We have in increased our efficiency of our heating and air conditioning units and building automation where the buildings then can shut down at night, for example, when people aren't in here. So those are all ways that the city, some of the ways the city is working to reduce energy use in our own buildings, which of course saves money for taxpayers as well. And through this, uh, it's say, we've saved uh, over $500,000 so far and we'll continue to save money as these projects continue into the future. The city does uh, produce an energy report, so if you want to know more, you can go to the General Services website and look that up. We will have a new report out soon, so I encourage you to find out more about how we use energy in the city. And as was mentioned in the proclamation for uh, workplaces in Durham, we have the Bull City Workplace Challenge, so I encourage any workplace in Durham to go there and find out ways that you can reduce energy in your workplace and get recognized for that. And finally, for those at home, things that you can do 
changing out your light bulbs. If you change out the five most common light bulbs you use in your home with LEDs, you can save up to $75 a year, an estimate. Um, sealing uh, leaks in your ductwork and around your doors and windows. And um, just really paying attention to how you use energy in your home and do your part to reduce that energy so that we have a clean planet for these kids and for future generations. And um, encourage you to think about that through the month of October. Thank you. And now I'm going to call on my council colleague, Mark Anthony Middleton. Uh, we have the National Arts and Humanities Proclamation. And Sherry DeVries is here from the Durham Arts Council. And Sherry, it looks like you have some guests, including a special guest, I see. Mark Anthony. My thanks to His Honor, the Mayor, for sharing one of the coolest aspects of his job, and that is reading these wonderful proclamations. And it's a great honor to read this one. Whereas the arts and humanities enhance and enrich the lives of all Americans, and whereas the arts and humanities affect every aspect of life in America today, including the economy, social problem solving, job creation, education, creativity, and community livability, and whereas cities and states through their local and state arts agencies and representing thousands of cultural organizations have celebrated the value and importance of culture in the lives of Americans and the health of thriving communities during National Arts and Humanities Month for several years. And whereas the United States Conference of Mayors has actively participated in National Arts and Humanities since 19, National Arts and Humanities Month since 1984, and whereas the United States Conference of Mayors National Arts Partner, Americans for the Arts, will again coordinate this year a national awareness campaign of activities for National Arts and Humanities Month, okay. and whereas the nation's 95,000 nonprofit arts organizations, the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the nation's 5,000 local arts agencies, the Arts and Humanities Councils of the 50 states, and the six U.S. jurisdictions, and the President of the United States have participated again this year in this national celebration. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 2018 as National Arts and Humanities Month in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to take special note of this observance. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this first day of October, 2018. Good evening. Thank you, Councilman Middleton, council members, and Mayor Shule. Thank you so much for this proclamation and recognition of National Arts and Humanities Month. Thank you to the City of Durham for your strong support of the arts and humanities. Public sector support and the donations of hundreds of corporations, foundations, and individuals have helped the arts to grow and thrive in Durham. With community support, last year the Durham Arts Council, together with arts and cultural organizations and artists that we support and serve, and partner with, brought arts and cultural experiences to nearly 1.3 million people last year. And this month of October, we encourage everyone to enjoy the Click Photography Festival throughout the Triangle and in many venues in Durham, and especially to check out the fence photo installation uh, right next to City Hall created by our city's Public Art Committee. So there's many activities throughout Durham to enjoy in the arts and humanity this month, and we encourage everyone to participate. We are grateful for a community that is helping to make arts experiences plentiful, excellent, and accessible to everyone, especially in Durham. The National Center for Arts Research recently released a study naming Durham number seven in U.S. mid-sized cities for arts vibrancy our first time making the top 10 national ranking. And Asheville is the only other North Carolina community in the top 10. 
Just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Shule, for your kind recognition of this achievement. And now it is my pleasure to congratulate and thank our new board president for her leadership and wonderful enthusiasm for arts and humanities, Dr. Constanza Gomez Joins. Good evening. Thank you, Sherry, for that introduction. It's truly an honor to be the new president for the Durham Arts Council Board. And tonight I'm so very excited because it is my privilege to introduce to you the North Carolina Poet Laureate, Jackie Shelton Green. Yeah, yeah. A native of Orange County, Jackie has been active in North Carolina's literary and teaching community for more than 40 years. She has written eight books of poetry, co-edited two poetry anthologies, and written one play. She's a North Carolina Literary Hall of Fame inductee and received the North Carolina Award for Literature. She was, a, she was awarded two emerging artist grants from the Durham Arts Council, was inaugural Piedmont Laureate, and won the Sam, Re the Sam Reagan Award for Contributions to the Fine Arts of North Carolina. She currently teaches documentary poetry at Duke University. We are so lucky that Jackie has chosen to build her home and her artistic life in the heart of Carolina. So please join me in welcoming Jackie. Mayor Shul, City Council, and citizens. Nine years ago, I stood here as the first Piedmont Laureate to reflect on what Arts and Humanities Month means in Durham. Today, it is my pleasure to be introduced as the first African-American woman to be appointed North Carolina Poet Laureate. It has been a long journey to both of these honors. My accomplishments as a writer are built on my personal experience and all of my interactions with other writers, scholars, mentors, community groups, international scholars, students, organizers, government, educational, health, and service sectors. I am grateful that my voice allows me to distill this experience to speak for my community and for my state. My story illustrates the breadth of the arts and humanities, which are not abstract labels, but living practices. The arts and humanities embrace those who make art, who transmit and preserve history, cultural traditions, who work to lift up individual voices and cultures, and those who take the time to listen. I was appointed Piedmont Laureate because of my work, but the position exists because the North, I'm sorry, but the position exists because the local arts councils of Durham, Orange, and Wake counties came together to lift up the voices of writers. I have received grant support from the Durham Arts Council and also served on the Emerging Artists Committee. The Arts Council and I both benefit from this relationship with the result that the impact spread to more writers who continue to benefit because we first worked together. While the arts and humanities are most easily illustrated by the accomplishments of one person, they are in fact a living web of interactions. We do not do this work in a vacuum, nor should we look to do so. I encourage you to celebrate Arts and Humanities Month by reflecting on the ways in which your practice engages the wider culture to which we all contribute. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I will just I will make an announcement concerning Jackie Shelton Green, our Poet Laureate. 
uh, not long ago. I met her at the fence where she has fragments of a longer poem, which are uh, um, paired with some wonderful photographs by Barbara Tyroller. And uh, I had previously had the suggestion from Beverly Thompson, who I don't see Beverly here today, uh, that I might ask our poet laureate if she would write a poem for Durham's 150th birthday, which she has consented to do. So we're very excited. Her only question was, when is it due? <laughs> and when I said not till April, she was good with it. So we're very excited about that and most appreciative. Thank you all so much for being here. We have one more uh, proclamation tonight, and I'm going to ask Councilmember Vernetta Austin to join me. And uh, Vernetta, uh, I know that Luke Hurst is here uh, as one of the recipients of this, but I know there are other folks as well. Do you want to uh, sure. announce them? Sure, Great. of course. Thank you. Um, so in addition to Luke, some of the folks who were instrumental in bringing the first gay pride parade to Durham uh, in 1986 are here to receive this proclamation. So yeah, don't want my coming on up. Whereas Durham has long been a city that champions its diversity. And whereas Durham and its residents have played an important role in the fight for the health, safety, and equality of our LGBTQ communities here and across the country. And whereas October has been recognized nationally as LGBTQ History Month since the first National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights on October 14, 1979. And whereas October 11th is also National Coming Out Day and October 11th, 2018 is the 30th anniversary of the first National Coming Out Day. And whereas Durham can proudly recognize local LGBTQ pioneers, including Polly Murray, Mandy Carter, Mab Sigret, Sigres, no, sorry, and Carl Whitman, who deserve acknowledgement and praise for the impact on our city and our nation. And whereas the city of Durham can also celebrate that it was the third municipality in our state to offer domestic partner benefits to its employees. And whereas, as we reflect on this year's North Carolina Pride, it is important to celebrate that the first LGBTQ march in North Carolina took place here on Main Street in Durham on June 27, 1981, as our day out in response to a hate crime that occurred in our city. Five years later, the first annual Pride March in North Carolina took place in June, 2000, or <laughs> June 1986, also here in Durham. And whereas, it's important to engage Durham residents in LGBTQ history, particularly our local LGBTQ history, which has made our city a significant nexus of LGBTQ culture and activism in the South. Uh, community groups over the last four decade, decades, excuse me, such as the Triangle Lesbian and Gay Alliance, Triangle Area Lesbian Feminists, North Carolina Lesbian and Gay Health Project, Southerners on New Ground, Umoja, and North Carolina Lambda Youth Network have helped pave the way for more recent organizations such as the LGBTA Resource Center at North Carolina Central University, the LGBTQ Center of Durham, and El Centro Hispanos pioneering LGBTQ programming. And whereas visibility can and does affect our ability to understand each other, the ability to recognize people like ourselves in history as well as in current public life increases the well-being of our communities, especially our youth, and creates an atmosphere in which we can all thrive as our whole selves. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2018 as LGBTQ History Month and October 11th, 2018 as Coming Out Day in the city of Durham and here call upon the people of Durham to observe this month. Witness my hand and the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this first day of October, 2018. Thank you. Hi, I'm Betsy Barton. You can never present me with a mic and, and I won't say anything. So don't worry, these are all old notes from 35 <laughs> years ago, testimonies right here in this room that I'm not going to read. Uh, but I wanted to tell one story to show how things, they change so much and they don't change at all. So back in 1986, we wanted to put an ad in the News and Observer and we paid $461 to do our, I think it was a quarter page ad. And the content was objectionable to them so they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't publish the ad. It took us uh, about three weeks of advocacy, advocacy to get them to publish it. So I just want to read a few of those offending words to you. Um, I have a copy of the, the ad here. So I'll just read a little bit of it. 
maybe I'll just even read the four headlines. So, so the four headlines were uh, gay, and, gay men and lesbians are everywhere. Lesbians and gay men are subject to discrimination. Gay men and lesbians are ordinary people. So they wouldn't publish that ad because they said that um, they needed proof that 10 to, percent, 10 to 15 percent of the population was gay or lesbian. They also said they needed proof that every person could um, had a friend or a neighbor or a coworker that was gay or lesbian, and they wouldn't publish the ad without proof. They also said that people in small workplaces would be scared. So, um, so we march on, um, literally, and we really appreciate um, the recognition uh, that has come from this. You know, 30 years ago when we were doing this, there was no internet. There was no rainbow flag, there were no cell phones, there were no domestic partner benefits in Durham, there was no protection in Durham based on sexual orientation, which was then called affectional preference, because nobody would say the word sexual. Um, and so then to close, I just wanna say, I wanna quote Jackie that, uh, you know, we don't do this work in a vacuum, that, uh, you know, when a rising tide raises all boats and we have plenty of work left to do so that all people, including transgender people of all ages, races, and cultural backgrounds can be safe to be who they are and to live through the day. And uh, the same for lesbian and gay youth who are, have a tremendously high rate of suicide. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Austin. I will just say that uh, I was also at that march in 1986, and I was at the march in 1981 as well on Main Street, and um, they were nothing like the march that we had this past weekend, which uh, was an amazing outpouring of love and happiness. And uh, just want to thank you all for being amongst the originals, and so glad that you all were here to, uh, to be able to accept this proclamation. Thank you. All right, we had more than the usual number of proclamations tonight and ceremonial items. We're making up for it by having less than the usual number of public hearings, and I think that's a fair trade. Mm -hmm. um, any announcements by members of the council? Councilmember Freeman? I um, have a particular <coughs> point. Hold on. Sorry. So I just wanted to take a moment to, uh, to kind of address some of the concerns that I've been hearing and seeing um, in the media and recognizing how uh, sexual violence can play out. I wanted to make sure that I took a moment to just note um, in the words of a powerful woman that tox toxic mas masculinity has harmed us all and we are in a moment where we can have change for future generations, sorry. The power we hold and is, is in our ability to rally behind what is right, what is fair and equitable to create better outcomes for the future. We know what bravery means and does for the people of this country. We know that, the, that there are battles that we must face and as a sexual, a sexual violence survivor, I feel like it would be irresponsible of me not to take the moment to use this platform to acknowledge that over the last few months and weeks, um, the trauma that I have experienced, I feel others might be experiencing, and I wanna to point to the fact that the National Sexual, sexual Assault Hotline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can call them at 1-800-656-HOPE. Trauma is very real for survivors of sexual violence and the people who love them. I wanna recognize that I couldn't follow the stories on, um, online, nor 
watch the hearing. I can't bear it. It's too much. And it's very triggering, the conversations that occur. And you have to, you have to give folks space. And I want to make sure that I point that out. I also wanted to, um, on a lighter side, thank the Art of Cool for bringing the 90s vibe back this past weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Freeman, thank you for that statement. I appreciate that heartfelt and uh, important, important statement and personal statement. So thank you. Thank you. Other announcements by members of the council? Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Manager, any priority items? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Good evening, everyone. I don't have any priority items uh, from the agenda uh, for this evening, but I would like to uh, take a moment and uh, acknowledge that uh, yesterday afternoon uh, we welcomed back 18 of our fine uh, employees, police officers, who volunteered to uh, spend a week over in Wilmington assisting the uh, Wilmington Police Department as they recover from the, uh, uh, the, the issues associated with Hurricane Florence. The officers, uh, first and foremost, they stayed, lived in a conference room at the Wilmington Police Department, oh. sleeping on cots and air mattresses for that period of time. Uh, in addition to providing uh, a variety of security services at the base camp, uh, at the points of distribution where water and MREs were being distributed to the community, uh, at the disaster relief camp, and uh, also uh, providing some security where supplies were being stored. They, uh, they also um, actually worked the, uh, the uh, patrols in Wilmington to provide some relief to uh, many of the police officers who had been literally working around the clock during those first few days of the storm following the storm. Uh, they, they worked patrol in Wilmington, they directed traffic in Wilmington, and uh, they did all this uh, typically working uh, anywhere from 15 or 12 to uh, uh, 15 hours a day for that eight-day period. And I would like to uh, just take a moment and recognize or acknowledge uh, those officers who volunteered to do this great work. Officer Austin Acker, Officer Steve Barma, uh, Sergeant Jessica Butler, Officer Derwood Colquitt, Officer Brian Johnson, Officer Joseph Justice, Officer Nicholas Lind, Corporal Jose Montoya, Officer Monty Sutherland, Officer Justin Bell, Captain Marianne Bond, Corporal Kimberly De La Cruz, Officer Jefferson Graham, Officer Justin Rose, Officer Charles Strickland, Officer Corey Ugolik, Officer Christopher Walker, and Officer Andrew Wilkinson. And I just wanted to extend my appreciation as well as I'm sure the appreciation uh, from the community for their work in assisting the city of Wilmington last week. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager, and uh, please extend our thanks and congratulations to them. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, Mr. Attorney. Uh, no item, Mayor. Uh, Madam Clerk. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager. I do have a priority item. I'd like to uh, administer the oath to Alexandra Valladares with the Human Relations Commission. If she would please Great. come forward. I, I put your yes. Raise your right hand. Put your left hand on your Bible. I state your name. I Alexandra Valladares. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution. Uh, Constitutional laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. 
and that I will faithfully and impartially that will that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office discharge the duties of my office as a member of the Human Relations Commission as a member of the Human Relations Commission so help me God so help me God I have read understand and subscribe I have read understand and subscribe to the code of ethics of the city of Durham to the code of ethics of the city of Durham congratulations thank you Ms. Valladares, thank you so much for agreeing to serve. We're excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <coughs> uh, and now we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda um, items can be approved by a single vote of the council. Any item can be removed by, from the consent agenda by a member of the council or a member of the public. And if it is removed, will be voted on will be discussed and voted on at the end of the meeting. So I'll now read the consent agenda items. Number one, approval of city council minutes. Number two, housing appeals board appointment. Number three, racial equity task force appointments. And we have two speakers on that, so I will pull that from the consent agenda. Item four, sesquicentennial honors commission appointments. Uh, uh, item five, departmental measures performance audit dated June 2018. Item six, facilities maintenance performance audit dated June 2018. Item seven, housing for New Hope rapid rehousing performance that audit dated June 2018. Item eight, request to carry over funds from 2017-18 to 18-19 budget, other bu budget ordinances. Item nine, contract with Friesen Nichols Inc. for South Durham phase three hydraulic model. Item 10, August 2018 bid report. Item 11, purchase and maintenance agreement with Sharp Business Systems in North Carolina for multifunctional devices. Item 12, contract with Horace G. Elderton LLC for 64 police vehicles. Item 13, contract with Transource Inc. for 11 replacement dump trucks. Item 14, temporary construction and grading easement and fence donation with the Miracle League of the Triangle Inc. for the construction of the Durham Miracle Athletic Park. Item 15, utility construction agreement for U5745 Hope Valley Road Roundabout and NC751 at University Drive, SR 1183. And those are the items on the consent agenda. Uh, with the exception of item three, I would welcome an, a motion for approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Move Mayor, I'd like to pull a few items, uh, 9, 11, and 13, and 14. 9, 11, 13, and 14, okay? All righty, with the exception of items 3, 9, 11, 13, and 14, I'll accept a uh, motion on the consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Madam Clerk, will you please uh, open the vote? <coughs> sorry, I forgot where we were. Uh, please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Now we'll move to item three, the Racial Equity Task Force, and I have two speakers on this item, Trevor J. Wells and Donald Ray Nolan, Jr. And I would ask the two of you all, if you wouldn't mind, to please come over here to this podium, uh, and you each have three minutes. And I will begin uh, with Mr. Wells. Mr. Wells, if you could state your name and address. Good evening. My name is Trevor J. Wells, and I reside at 909 Cook Road. Um, today, I'd like to speak to um, the Racial Equity Task Force um, and to commend the city um, for the creation of the task force. Um, racial equity has been an issue of mine, and I have tried to work with different community organizations to make sure that there is a focus on equity and race. Today, however, I'd like to also speak about what I believe racial equity needs to be about, and that is accountability. Um, I've long had a problem with police accountability in this community. I've long had a problem with the Civilian Review Board as it exists. There is legislation, or has been, introduced uh, by Representative Rodney Moore of Charlotte, HB 193, that provides a framework for greater police civilian review board accountability. 
I think that should be definitely a focus, perhaps, of the Racial Equity Commission. Also tonight, I come to you today to uh, talk about um, the shooting death of DeAndre Ballard. DeAndre Ballard was a uh, rising senior, about to graduate, who was killed and whose body was not identified until about three days after his death. He resided at uh, Campus Crossing, uh, which is student housing not far from North Carolina Central University and houses a great number of North Carolina Central University students. Uh, the security company and the Durham police uh, haven't been very forthcoming uh, about uh, what all took place that night. But those that knew him, those that loved him, understood who he was as a person. And the narrative that we've been given by the security company by, about why he died is not consistent with who people knew him to be. Uh, Virginia Napolitano, uh, speaking to the media, stated that he wanted to graduate for his family because he loved his family. He was working hard to get his degree so that they would be proud of him. A lifelong friend and classmate of Ballard's, Deontay Grimes, tells me he was active in the university and Durham communities. And he said that Ballard often volunteered at local schools to mentor kids, being the father that they didn't have. The narrative that we've been given is that somehow a graduating senior decided to break from his normal routine and start breaking into cars and got into a security vehicle and thus was killed. That is not really consistent to me with the truth. Those things and the accountability of our police department need to be considered. Thank you so very much for your time. Mr. Wells, thank you for being here. Yes, uh, I just, our city manager does have something to say about this, and I just offer him the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Wells, and uh, certainly don't want to respond to all the comments you made, but do want to confirm that the matter still is under investigation. It's an active police investigation. Uh, the police department is awaiting a number of uh, reports, uh, lab testing reports that uh, hopefully when uh, they are received can be discussed with the district, district attorney and uh, information can then be more forthcoming. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Mr. Uh, Mr. Nolan, could you please give us your name and address, sir? And you also have three minutes. Yes, uh, my name is Donald Nolan Jr. Uh, my address is 1668 Holly Grove Way. And it's referring to what he was just talking about by DeAndre Ballard. Uh, it, it's not consistent with the law, I say the process of how the laws are supposed to be on if somebody gets murdered, uh, not murdered, but just killed, there's no investigation at all. But, but you, since you said there is an investigation, I will uh, withhold judgment accordingly. But I'm just not, I'm just worried about the whole process for all people of color to go through something similar to this. And for me specifically, there was an incident that happened around September 22nd with me. Uh, there were, I was taking my uh, student worker home to Campus Crossing, and there was a police officer who, for whatever reason, just followed me from uh, Austin Avenue to Campus Crossing to drop him off. I'm not sure why he was following me, not sure why he tagged me, uh, was running my tag, I knew he was running my tag, but he was uh, following me all the way from Central to Campus Crossing. Also, he uh, rode right beside us and just looked in our vehicle. And I'm, I'm not sure why he did that, and I'm not sure who the officer was, but I'm just concerned about what's going on in this community. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate that the investigation is ongoing, as the manager says, and I know that our police department uh, is taking it with the utmost seriousness. So I want to thank you all both for being here and want you to know that we are also taking it with seriousness. So thank you. Mr. Mayor. Council I just want to, um, I haven't had a chance to bring it up, but I, I did want to talk about this incident and I understand it's under investigation. I'm specifically concerned around if we have numbers in communication with um, armed security guards at other apartment complexes throughout the city. I'm not sure what it looks like to kind of get a roundtable discussion 
together around this, but I think it's important to make sure that we're, along with the investigation, that we're looking at how we address the known issue around, you know, unarmed black men being shot. And so just, just recognizing there are some delicate um, intricacies around this, but we can, we can at least try to have some conversation to help folks understand what the process looks like and how um, we work together with our local um, armed security guards. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I might. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I want to thank the speakers. I, I want to say a very quick, very briefly, that um, I, I've gotten the emails and I've gotten the phone calls and I've gotten the messages. And I want to say uh, very directly, and I thank both of you for coming out. Um, I want to say very directly that I, I appreciate city manager's comment that there's, there's an ongoing investigation, and there is. And um, please do not um, label silence as non-vigilance, as non-concern. Um, when I leave this podium and drive, I'm a black dude driving. So I, 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 I hear you and, and, and I've read every message, I've read every email, and for what it's worth, what it's worth, uh, not just me, but I, I vouch for everybody up on this podium to a person uh, that we are vigilant and do not confuse the silence for non-vigilance or non-concern. This investigation is ongoing um, and it is active. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Any more comments? All right, if not, I'm gonna ask for a motion on this item for the approval of the Racial Equity Task Force appointments. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Any more discussion? If not, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move to item nine, contract with Friesen Nichols, Inc. for South Durham Phase Three Hydraulic Model. Councilmember Freeman. Uh, thank you. I, my specific question is around the, um, the goals for this project and that there were no MUBE or WUBE assigned for this contract. And I just wanted to make sure that we were looking at, you know, whenever there's a multi-million dollar or million dollar project that this is <coughs> important to recognize that this is mainly a contract for project management and engineering services. And uh, looking at their staff, I wasn't sure if it was the Freeze and Nichols or if it was Stewart who was staffing um, workforce statistics were included. Um, good evening. Uh, or if it was both, it was combined. Right. I'm gonna be mayor, uh, mayor pro tem, members of council. Um, the workforce statistics is just for um, Freeze and Nichols. Okay. And just noting, like usually it's noted on the total workforce statistics, it's who's it is, whether it's Freeze and Nichols or Stewart's I mean, and if you have both, it would be nice to know what Stewart's looks like as well. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll make sure we include that next time. Thank you. Thank you, any more questions or comments? If not, I'll accept a motion that we approve this contract, item Good. nine. Second. Thank you. All the, um, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you. We'll now move to item 11, purchases and maintenance agreement with Sharp Business Systems of North Carolina for multifunctional devices, council member. Uh, thank you. I, I just wanted to applaud um, the relationship with the Sharp Business Systems and recognizing their diversity around, around gender and people of color across levels of staffing was really um, refreshing. And that was pretty much it, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Any more comments? If not, do I hear a motion that we approve the purchase agreement, oh, purchase and sorry. maintenance Second. agreement? It's been moved and seconded that we approve the purchase and maintenance agreement. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Now we'll move to item 13, Council Member Freeman. And item 13, um, the Transforce Inc. 
their workforce statistics was not included, so I didn't know whether or not there was a request or if there were, like if we had background knowledge around it or what have you. Good evening, Joe Clark, Fleet Management Director. I'm sorry, the opposite. I'm looking at, I'm sorry, I'm confusing it with the previous one. Um, with number 12. And number, with, number 13. Number really. 13, um, I have a concern around the lack of diversity, and so I just wanted to ask if you were having conversations with your vendors and your um, contractors around uh, what it looks like to create more diversity in their workforce. We have ongoing conversations with all of our vendors. Uh, we express, you know, the city's goals and what diversity looks like. I do have a representative here from TransSource, if you would like to speak sure. further with, with what their efforts are. Sure. Sorry, good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Members of council. Could you give us your name and address, please? Sure. Matt Walsh. I'm at 229 Huntington Drive in Chapel Hill. All right. Council Member Freeman. Thank you, Matt Walsh, for being here. Thank you. I, I really, um, I try my best to keep an eye on what it looks like for us as municipal um, fiscal agents or fiscally responsible you know, members of this community to acknowledge what it looks like around race equity mm -hmm. and acknowledging that there the lack of diversity across your professional level was concerning. I just want to make sure I highlight that. Thank you. If you want, if you had a response, that would be fine. Well, I mean, I've been with Transforce now two years. Okay. Um, before that, I was 20 years with the Volvo Group. Uh, most of my experience was outside the United States, uh, living and working in over 49 different countries. So I'm very well aware of what a diverse workforce can bring to the value of the company. Uh, my owners start with one location and Kernersville in 1982, still a family-owned business. Uh, we are making strong efforts to, to gain that diversity. Uh, most of our active recruiting is around the technical side, so we do recruit heavily at the technical schools throughout the country and the state. Um, over the two years I've been there, we have had some marked improvement in our diversity, but it is something we are focused on going forward, and it's something that uh, the city has made very clear as part of a priority. I appreciate that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, any more comments or discussions? If not, I'll accept a motion that we, on item 13, we approve the contract with Transource Inc. Move to approve. Second. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. All right, we'll now move to, I'm Motion sorry. passes 7 0. Thank you. We'll now move to item 14 temporary construction and grading easement and fence donation with the Miracle League of the Triangle Inc. for the construction of the Durham Miracle Athletic Park. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Stephen Hicks, General Services Director. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Council Member Freeman? That's just along the same lines. I was looking for the workforce statistics, and I'm understanding that we've got, we've got a previous relationship with Capital Broadcasting, and it may be something that's already noted someplace else. It would be nice to have it included in your reports, if you have it, and if you don't, to request it. Um, also noting, I'm not sure how it works for when, when a partner, because we have a contract with them, is, is doing the construction, if they actually ain't collect workforce statistics as well, but it's nice to, it's really nice to be able to gather how much of an impact we're having with our resolution around, you know, creating greater racial equity, what is happening uh, across the board. So just making sure that we're tracking it. Will do. Thank you. Yeah, so just let me be clear though, this is not a, this is a, uh, construction and grading easement. We don't have a contract in this case. We're just... No, there was an agreement. I'm sorry, not a contract, but an agreement set up a, a few sessions back. I want to say in July, August. I will. About what? Uh, to, in order to do the easement. Don O'Toole City Attorney's Office. There was a utility extension agreement. Okay. So with the utility extension agreement, um, there was no work done at all. That's just an agreement with the developer, and it's not with a specific contractor. Okay, so as the developer being Capital Broadcasting and the Durham Bulls Park, we don't collect workforce statistics from them? No, we don't. 
No, the, only, the only time we do this is if we contract with, with a particular vendor or contract or consult. Do you talk to, uh, I want to say, uh, I know it's under Wanda Page. The EOEA? EOEA. Do you, do you have? Not about this situation. Because well, specifically about perfect. making sure that we have the data. Data for developers and? For whomever we're making agreements, contracts. Well, um, I don't know. Purchases. Typically, we, we don't gather Steven, that information. Steven. Oh, go. Yeah, no, typically, any, you know, if, if it's, uh, this is something that the council wants to have further discussion about, we certainly can, but we are not asking for um, labor statistics from any entity, every entity that we have an agreement with. Okay. If, if this is not a pre for procurement services or those kinds of things, we certainly do. But, uh, you know, in the case of a, of a business like Capital Broadcasting, who's developing, you know, build, building this miracle field project, we would not normally ask for their workforce statistics. Okay. Okay. So we've never asked for their workforce mm -hmm. statistics in the past? I, I can't say never uh, because that's a long time, uh, but it's something that, uh, you know, I feel pretty comfortable that uh, if there we was a concern about Capital Broadcasts, Broadcastings uh, or American Tobacco's workforce statistics, they'd be glad to provide them. I think it would be helpful. I think they would have a very diverse number. Like they would have diverse numbers. It'd be nice to reflect it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me just observe that uh, I believe that this is the kind of work that we ought to be doing in our work session. That we have often discussed the the um, the workforce makeup of. Of, of the uh, the various people we contract with in our work session, and I think that we ought to try to do that work there. Uh, so, um, you know, occasionally we might have to bring it here to the city council, but in general, I think that that's the place where we do this kind of work, and uh, it's important to try to do it there when staff can be there, and we're sure that uh, the vendors can be there as well in case we have any questions. Okay, I'm going to ask for a motion on item... 14. 14, thank you. The... Approval of the temporary construction and grading easement. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Madam Clerk, please open the vote. I, would, I just want to make sure I note. Uh -huh. um, I actually had an, a prior engagement during work session, so I wasn't able to pull any items in the last one, so this is why I pulled them now. Okay. So. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please open the vote? Please close the vote. How are we doing over there? You want us to do it again? Why don't we vote again, Ashley? All right. Would you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. I believe that is all the uh, business to come before this body. I will declare this meeting adjourned at 801. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hey.